going on everyone? Jason here, and today I want to show you my method of a new game plus. Now this method is actually designed to give you a slight advantage at the start, but nothing overpowered or game breaking to where you don't enjoy the game after this point. Now obviously there is some ground rules to follow, and the first thing I actually want to point out is obviously you're going to have to play on creative, and I highly recommend you play on a 120 minute day cycle at this moment in time. You know, after you're done and everything, you're more than free to change your preferences back to how you like it. But for this moment, I would highly recommend the 120 minute days. This gives you ample amount of time to accomplish everything that you need to accomplish before you move on to your game. So the very next big rule or foundation to uh, the system is your quality. So anything that has a quality like your weapons, tools, mini bike parts, clothes, you want to go with 200 to 250, or if you want to play a little bit more rugged, you can go with the 150 to 200 range, you know, whichever range you want, but give yourself that 50 point range just to give you some leeway, and I'll obviously get into that as to why here in a second, but the very first thing after you spawn in, you know, you're in that buffer zone, so you shouldn't have to worry about zombies. There could be potentially a bear. Now, that's always a chance. But for the most part, you should be relatively safe. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is complete those tasks. Now, you could sit there and punch grass and all that wonderful shit, but why bother? You know, this is all about getting established as fast as you can possibly get before you get to your game. So if you've never played on creative, you now it sits right there. This is your search bar. And I highly recommend you just go ahead, pull yourself out a stack of wood, small stone, plant fibers, and feathers. Then go ahead, craft all the tasks, get that out of the way. Once you do that, discard everything out of your inventory. You're not keeping any of it. So once you do all those tasks, Leave Journey to Settlement open, and now it's time to craft your mini bike. So back into the creative, type in mini, and voila. Now obviously, go ahead and pull out your mini bike schematic, that way you can assemble it. And if you never played on creative, on PlayStation, L2, R2 will toggle the pages back and forth. On Xbox, I would assume it's the left bumper, right bumper. And as you can see, the quality will change every time you change the page. Now, there's a 203, so I'm going to grab that right now. Flip it back, and now you can see now it's up to 497. But what you want to do is try to keep your eye on all the items that are showing. And this is why you have that 50-point leeway. You know, you're looking for around 200. If it's like 198, whatever, 190 take it if it's you know 224 grab it you don't want to sit here and spend an hour or two of your time toggling back and forth to get exactly the right number that you're trying to get but again do not exceed the 250 otherwise you start breaking into that realm of not really needing to go do much and you still want to give yourself uh the uh, the need to go out and search, you know, loot, craft, buy with the trader, and things of that nature. So, like I said, you know, found the 203. Uh, let's see, real quick. You know, I went back to the 203. That's kind of a coincidental. You know, oh, there, 207. I'd, I'd swipe that. And etc. So, you know, again, once you get all your parts, that's your battery small engine your basket and a padlock if you use it pull your out uh pull yourself out some gas fill up your mini bike and discard all the gas that you pulled out and then assemble your bike Ta -da. now as soon as you assemble your bike you know you can go ahead and pull yourself out a set of clothes you know i always grab a uh, mining helmet while i'm there So 
So your mini bike. Now here's where the second big bulk of a uh, rule set or foundation uh, lays. Your mini bike storage is basically a rep representation of, say, pulling a trailer, a U-Haul, anything that has a lot of weight, your heavy items would go in there. So that includes raw resources, crafting materials, your workstations, and even power tools. And it's designed this way for a reason. This is so you can't just over spam so much stuff. You know, you have a restriction on space, so you really have to plot and plan accordingly to what you really, really deem necessary. Now, when it comes to raw resources and anything, actually, you're only allowed to take one stack of anything. So you can't fill up your mini bike with nothing but nitrate and move on. Now, and as you can see with uh, the way I have it set up, these are the nine raw resources I take. When it comes to crafting materials, you're restricted to only a stack of 50. And there's a reason for this. But the best way to put it is, let's face it, duct tape, a full stack is 500. Mechanical parts, a full stack is 1,000. If you've played this game before, uh, you know 1,000 mechanical parts pretty much covers every damn thing you ever need for the rest of your game. So, again, it's kind of game-breaking. So, limit yourself to 50. Then, of course, you know, I have my set of uh, workstations. And then I still have an open spot for something like maybe a stack of uh, springs. Or any other resources that you want. Or, say, your auger, if you much prefer to have that. You could go with uh, gas barrels if you really wanted to. But then I would actually say only a stack of five. Because those uh, those can be a little bit overpowered as well. Even though I have a stack of 6,000 oil shell, that still means I have to, you know, I still have to set up a chem station and physically craft it. So there's a little work involved in that. So that's how my mini bike storage is set up. Now when it comes to your backpack inventory, these are all the quote-unquote lighter items. Things that would actually fit into a backpack a little bit more uh, realistically. So if you want a stack of bottled water, that's fine. I take a stack of cornbread. You could take meat stew, but if you did, I would uh, recommend you only take half a stack because it is overpowered. Antibiotics, you know, I usually go with only about 10, to be honest. Of course, you know, I, I do pull out a, a coat and a poncho along with all my clothes. So if you haven't pulled clothes out at this point, now's a good time to do it. Get yourself dressed. We'll get the tools here in a second. I like taking a beaker, cooking pot, and cooking grill. That way I don't have to set up a forge and craft it immediately. And that fits into a backpack anyway. When it comes to seeds, I like taking seeds. Now normally I take uh, only a 20 stack of seeds at most. I don't know why I have it 30 here. I guess I was in a rush. You could go up to 30 if you really wanted to. I mean, seeds, even though I don't grow anything in real life, you know, seeds fit into a package that's about the size of your hand. And, what, the count is usually like, what, 10, 20 anyway? So, and seeds are small. So, it's very feasible to picture finding some Ziploc bags, you know, in the apocalypse and stuffing them with about 20 seeds and packing them, in, packing them into a backpack and moving on. Uh, calipers and tool and die set. Uh, realistically... You know, it's only good for making rocket launcher ammo, so if you're not using them, you don't really need them. But you could always take them. I like taking a stack of uh, repair kits. I have a half stack here. You know, if you want to make it a little bit harder, half a stack, or just take a full stack, that's totally fine. I take a stack of first aid kits, obviously, and then ammunition. And if you want to take dukes, they go in your mini bike storage. I'll add that right now. That way you can't fill up your entire inventory with dukes. And again, you're only limited to one stack of anything, so keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to your weapons and uh, tools, basically, you're uh, basically allowed one melee weapon, two ranged weapons. 
I mean, if you really wanted two melee and one ranged, I guess you could go that route. But I recommend one of the three is a melee weapon. Now, me, I personally like the uh, Spike Club. So, obviously, I pulled myself out of Spike Club. I try to keep it within that 2 250 range. Uh, and I also pull out the schematic. If you want the sledgehammer, you know, rinse and repeat, make sure you grab the schematic for it. Technically, anything that you're using on you, you're proficient in. So that's why you're allowed to have the schematic as well. I personally like my AK and my sniper rifle. But if you'd rather have a crossbow, that's more than fine. Yeah, I'll just make sure you grab your schematic for your weapons. And when it comes to guns, obviously, pull yourself out of flashlight. But keep it within that uh, quality range as well. And you can see how random it is in the... So that's, you know, it might be a 160... Nine start, but my barrel's only a four, so it's gonna take some work to level that up. Now, when it comes to uh, your hunting hunting knife, even though you could use that as a melee weapon, it's more used for you know harvesting animals and everything. So I don't really count that as a weapon. That was nice. Time. I mean, to be honest, you could use your steel fire axe or iron you know fire axe as a weapon too so yeah so pull out your tools but here is where the um real harder decision comes from i highly recommend you only take either iron or steel you know you're allowed to get the three set uh but only iron or steel and the reason why it's a decision making is because you're starting a new game your skills are completely crap so even with the steel pickaxe like I have right here while you will hit a little bit harder than you normally would have uh, you're still not really going to hit as hard as you actually believe you would and this is another reason why when it comes to like forged iron steel any crafting material this is why you have a stack of only 50 as a max yeah, you know, I'm pr I don't even believe I can craft a uh, steel pickaxe right at this moment without the steel smithing perk. So if I took steel, yeah, I could repair it. But you also got to remember, since your skills are completely crap, you know, this is a 224 that I uh, ended up getting. I'm probably going to lose, what, 20, 30 points because I have no skill in repairs. So that stack is, you know, going to become mute really quick if you do some hardcore grinding right off the start. Obviously, you have more of a superior advantage with iron since the minute you drop a forge, you can craft forged iron immediately. You don't need a perk for that. And you actually start off with a higher quality than what you normally would make. Now, do keep in mind when you do craft uh, tools on your own, yeah, it's level 1 and level 2 and, you know, no different than any other game. You're not pulling anything out in the uh, mini bike, or not mini bike, but the creative menu to raise your skills. You know, that, while technically you could do that uh, at the same, oh, it's Horde Night. Well, there ain't nothing spawning in this world. <laughs> but, um, while you technically could do that, uh, I would recommend you don't. That way you're not taking anything away from the game and the uh, progression of it. But once you have everything set how you want, realistically, I would recommend nothing be uh, filled in at least one solid roll. You know, these tools would actually be in my toolbar. So, realistically... Those three items would be gone. Those items could drop down here, and I would have an actual full roll. And the reason for that is the first day you spawn, the game loves throwing animals at you left and right. So take advantage of that. You know, you might want to stop and loot. Well, there's, you know, when you have everything filled, you're kind of running out of room really quick. But once you're all set and done, everything's established, 
your setup how you exactly want it. Now the game actually opens up for you. You can actually accomplish this really, really quick enough to where it's not even noon. Yeah, you know, with practice, you can get it down to like 10, 10 30 in the morning. But Journey to Settlement is active, meaning every time you get closer to a new trader, it will pop up on your map. 97% of the time. Some traders just don't show up. But because you're on a 120 minute day cycle as well, you have ample amount of time that if you're playing on a seed that you've never played on, or maybe it is a known seed but you really don't have that much info on, now you can personally jump on your mini bike, take to the road, and map out the entire seed. Now, also while you're driving around, you know, stick to the main roads. But as you're circling, you know, as you're driving around, keep an eye on your compass. You know, in this location, I have a trader to my southeast. But if I took the road and I started, say, traveling north, as I get away from that trader, another trader might pop up, say, maybe in the north or maybe northwest. You know, so when you see it, jump off your bike, open your map, see where that trader is, and then, you know, save him. This was a seed that I was trying to map, but it not really turned into my sandbox. But regardless, you know. Oops. And then, you know, it will take you a couple in-game days. Don't get me wrong. It's not that uh, super quick. But it is accomplishable. It's an easy goal. And the best part about that is as you're traveling around, you have the advantage of seeing the terrain, you know, the biomes, where all the towns are, and maybe spot an ideal spot for your new base. And because it'll take a few days, having these resources that you took with you is kind of almost like having that three days back. You know, instead of you running around um, trying to crack down wood, which, well, I mean, in this case, you'd need wood. But, you know, cracking, you know, small stones in order to get iron or raw iron, you know, digging up clay, you're already established. So we kind of get balances out to some degree. That's weird being out of Horde Knight and spawning off. But regardless... Now, this is my method. You can tweak it a little bit. But like I said, the main foundations, keep your quality within a range. Don't exceed over 250. You know, that, that is my, um, that's my biggest um, recommendation because you don't want to break it. You still want to be able to go out there and have that desire to go looting so you can find stuff. You know, you still want to have that excitement of making money and going to a trader and buying, you know, something. And like I said, you know, and when you pull out a weapon, you know, you're never guaranteed what the parts are. So, you know, you're still going to have to struggle and find and hope for, you know, hopefully maybe the airdrop will give you something good. It just does give you that little slight advantage, obviously. Oops, I did not mean to do that. But yeah, I mean, it's actually a really simple method. I have used this method actually a couple times. And to be honest, I actually enjoy it. Um, mostly because I play with an RP mentality, and if you do too, uh, I like to imagine when I'm done with the game, I'm packing some stuff from my base, loading up, and traveling to a new region. So these are all the things that I would have packed up and moved on. Now, obviously, you don't have to play with an RP mentality, but at least that kind of gives you a little bit of a... Uh, explanation to the origins of how I created this anyway for myself so obviously I hope you liked it uh, maybe this can be incorporated into your gameplay you know hopefully you'll actually like it as well uh, if you did uh, like the video the method obviously I do appreciate it if you do hit the like button it does help me out as well and it lets not only me know that you liked it 
but potentially find others that might find this uh, method actually interesting as well. If you have any comments, questions, obviously feel free to drop them below in the comments. I am always more than willing to shoot the shit with anybody and answer any questions. You know, that's kind of my thing. Um, and other than that, everyone, I really do hope you liked it. I hope you enjoy it if you do play it uh, with this method. More importantly, I hope you have a lot of fun in your games. That's the whole point why we play these games. And other than that, till next time, take it easy, everyone. Just glowing embers with every dawn, I'm feeling stronger still. But despite the slow decay, it never goes.